All right, so hopefully you're here from the last video. So if you're new to this channel, go down, hit that subscribe button while we're here. But if you are a returning subscriber and you've just been waiting for this video, you guys know I just finished out the rear video and we are tackling the front. So let's get, get uh, everything figured out first. So I wanna explain something to you guys. A lot of you guys are probably gonna cringe at this. Some of you guys are gonna understand where I'm coming from. So this right here, is an airbag lift spacer. This is what would go on an axle if you're running airbags. This is a four inch airbag lift spacer. This is designed to have the weight of the vehicle on it. We are putting it underneath this coil bucket right here. So a lot of people frown of putting spacers on the front of vehicles. Well, many companies that design lift kits feel like that truck, that has a six inch lift spacer in the front. It is perfectly fine, I don't know who started the, the myth years ago that, oh, this shouldn't be on the front of a vehicle. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. This was designed for this, and that has two bolts running through it, bolting it to the axle. What we're gonna do is run those bolts right through here, back into the axle, then bolt the coil bucket to this, hence at least four inches of lift. I say at least because just like with my Chevy, it's got a six inch lift spacer. It's really like five and a half inches, but it creates tension, therefore compressing the spring even more, lifting it even more. So this might be four inches, but we could get anywhere from four to six inches of lift out of it. Don't know until we try it. I'm the first person to try this. We're definitely about to see if it works or not. If you guys have been a part of this channel for a while or just even a little while, you guys know I like to do things that no one else has done. I like to push limits. I like to do really different things, like building my own radius arm drop brackets, using 2500 HD Chevy lift shackles, putting an 11 inch lift on a tool drive cat eye. I was one of the very first ones to do the two inch max track lift springs on the Rough Country six inch lift, and I have helped so many of you guys with that. So with that being said, we're doing this today. Hopefully it works. If it does, fantastic. So. If you like learning new things, if you like doing things outside of the box, if you like being different than everybody else, if you like pushing every day's limits, hit that subscribe button because I guarantee I'm gonna teach you some new shit along the way with every single build I do. Now, enough talking, let's get this truck lifted. Well, I was rudely cut off by my battery dying, but gist of the story is guys, don't let anything get in your way and stop you from doing what you wanna do, what you love. Building trucks is my number one passion. It's what makes me happy. I can sit out here all day and turn wrenches and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's my favorite thing to do. It enlightens my mind, it makes me happy. Um, I forget about everything else going on in the world. That This is what brings me joy in this life. And if there's anything in the world that brings you joy, you need to do it and you need to chase it. And it's exactly what I'm doing. I'm chasing it, guys. So join the journey, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let's get this front lifted because uh, <laughs> I'm eye level with my headlights. It's pretty freaking sick. So let's drop it down, get some things unbolted, and get at it.
birthday, Okay, so our holes don't line up perfectly on this. We could just go ahead and bolt it in this hole, drill another hole, and be lazy with it. But we've already got four pre-drilled holes. The bolts already aren't the right size, so we'd have to drill this out anyways. So what I'm gonna do, as you can tell, these are off-center. I'm going to off-center it as well. Um, we're gonna have to do this on both sides, but, the nice thing about this is, is we will be in factory spec with it being off center. It sits, I know you guys can't see it right now, but it sits, the axle sits like right here. And this side hangs over more. Well, this hangs over more. Actually, it's more like this, um, the side I'm looking at. So this bolts in the axle, this part of the axle runs right here. Uh, so that's, we're, we're just going to replicate it. So I'm going to drill some holes in this. Uh, get one side bolted in. Hopefully we can finish it before dark. If not, I'll pick you guys up in the morning. next morning and yep it's it's still just just as tall as it was last night uh, so last night all I got done were was the bottom holes in the spacer and I got it bolted in it's about the extent of it uh, I ran into a problem if your holes are not the exact width of the original spacer you will not be able to bolt it down I mean it's kind of like obvious right well, my holes were an eighth of an inch off and it would not bolt down. So I had to uh, correct that and drill that back out. Uh, but finally got it in. Now um, I'm gonna start the other side because I can't even get this axle low enough to even get this spring back on right now. So I'm gonna disconnect the other side, drop the axle down over there, get that spacer in and then hopefully get them both on at the same time might have to take the front tires off and put the, the rollers on or at least take the tires off just to get the springs connected and then jack it up and put the tires on i thought this was going to be high enough uh, but it might not be because looking at how it is right now that spring can't even go on top of that spacer the way it is and we still have to get the bucket on top of there and bolt that down so it is let's check our time it is 10 09 uh hopefully i can have this finished by lunchtime and close this video out
Okay, so now I'm marking my holes to put the airbag bolts, or the airbag spacer bolts in here. Now you wanna you wanna make sure you're still lined up with the top up here. And we're gonna do the whole circle, whole circle. The same thing over here. So now we know we can hit dead center on that and we'll be good. These bolts are smaller than this so we're only going to do the size that they'll fit in into here because if it's tight on here it'll hold this down tight now you guys might notice the spacer is leaning this way and that might give you some flashbacks to when we did the aftermarket coal buckets i know you guys can't see well coal tower i know you guys can't see that in frame but in that video we had a problem with our radius arm drop not being enough i'll tell you now guys the spring's gonna have some bow to it, but down the road I'm fixing it, okay? You guys know I did the radius arm drop brackets in the past. That was to fix the bow. Um, I, I have some ideas for a custom radius arm build. Uh, so this being bowed for the time being is gonna be perfectly fine. It's not gonna be as harsh as it was before, but it definitely is gonna have some bow to it. It's gonna be more when the axle's drooping, just because the farther the axle goes down, the more the axle turns forward. Once we actually get the spring on here and we get weight on it, it will straighten out some. But just wanted to cover that real quick. So go ahead, get our holes drilled, and see if we can get this side bolted together. And uh, hopefully, see how tall this thing's going to be. Because I thought we were high enough here, but obviously we're not. Obviously, uh, it's about as high as a. Uh, we can get it. This still has to go in here. So yeah, yeah, we definitely uh definitely gotta take the tire off and drop this axle down some. But it's all in the name of the game, right? And yeah, by the way, I definitely have to repaint the springs because they've gotten chipped up the amount of times I've taken them on and off. Um, areas where they're not getting hit has held up well, but areas where the bucket is, the tower is, it's just ripping paint off left and right. So definitely have to redo those. We've got the passenger side done. We got the holes drilled for the driver's side. Um, something I ran into way back when I did the coil towers was this top bolt right, as I dropped my ratchet, right here, um, is too close to the spring. And actually the spring hits it and it causes the spring not to sit flush in there. Well, we come over on this side. I had to take the entire upper coil, but, or coil tower out and I took, I don't know if you guys can even see the hole, but right behind that spring is the hole. I took that bolt out and we're sitting on two bolts. Um, eventually I would like to weld these to the frame, but I don't want to do anything crazy like that do it because I do plan on doing coilovers in the future. A lot of the stuff I'm doing is all temporary just to get me to where I want to be for now. Uh, like coil springs and the spacers on the axle. Uh, probably in the next year, hopefully. I would like to Dana 60 swap this, go full coilover, full four link, but unfortunately that, that can't really be done with the way my budgeting is right now and the tools that I have. I need a bigger welder and kind of need a shop for that to be completely honest. I at least need something where I can do that indoors uh, because this whole, this whole driveway crap is uh, getting pretty old pretty fast. So. Just letting you guys know that, that this isn't something that's permanent and this isn't something that is gonna stay this way forever because a lot of you guys probably like, oh, two bolts can't hold that coil tower in or oh, you're rocking a, a lift space on the bottom of your coil spring. Oh. I know there's gonna be some people in the comments that are gonna lose their mind. There always is, there always will be. There's always someone that knows how to do everything when they half the time don't even know what the hell they're talking about. But 
I've already jacked it up. We've got weight on that side. I actually had the chart sitting on the jack stand on that weight. Um, now, I just have to take that top bolt out, put the coil tower back on, put our coil spring in, and tighten everything up and we're done. This, this thing's gonna be fucking massive. I can't wait, guys. So, stop rambling on. Probably not gonna pick you guys up again until it's done. I know like time lapses are cool and everything. You guys kind of already know what I'm doing. You guys have already seen what I'm doing. I don't need to show you anymore. So, hopefully you're cool with that. I'll pick you up in a little bit. All right, I'm about to take the pipe stands out. I've got the sway bar connected. I haven't done my, well, not sway bar. I've got my track bar connected. I haven't done my drag link yet. I'm waiting to get it on the ground and see where exactly my tires are straight at. And I'm really excited to see how high it sits. So we're gonna get the pipe stands out and uh, get it down on the ground. Prediction was definitely right. We're uh, sitting right about six four, six five at the top of the hood. Monster truck status has been acquired. Yeah, axle's pretty centered now. Uh, we just got to get the track bar evened out. So instead of putting the pipe stands in the middle like I did last time, what I'm going to do this time is put them up on the front frame rails. Uh, that way I know I'm jacking up just the front because what I noticed yesterday when I jacked this up, I had it just about perfectly centered uh, that the back tires were coming off the ground. And we can't be having that. So I'm uh, gonna jack the front up and get it set down on the front, get this track bar adjusted, get our drag link connected and See if we can take it on a test drive. I just get the bag, then I whoop. Yeah. I just want the check like a swoosh. Yeah. Pop right up the jet to the coop. Don't gotta be all up in the loose when you're the loop. Yeah, yeah. Down up the loop. Yeah, loop. Yeah, loop. Call up the troops. We coming through. We coming through. Down up the loop. about how high it's gonna be for now. Okay. I'm getting bigger tires for it though. Okay. Yeah, he asked me how high I was going with it last night. And when I told him, he kind of repeated it back to me. He's like, 20 inches? <laughs> uh, that's 20 inches over stock height. So I, all of the lift, it isn't something you can buy online. It's something I fabricated. Uh, I have a YouTube channel that I make automotive videos on, and this is part of it, so I do it every weekend. Yeah, that's on my back window. I try to only do it at reasonable hours so I don't wake anybody up. Well, I, I know it would bother me if it was 11 o'clock at night and someone was beating something with a hammer, so. Uh, I, I leave about 6.50, so yeah. Have a good day.
All right, it's time to go on the first drive with it. Going around, I tightened everything down, made sure all the leaf spring bolts and everything were tight because, you know, I, I did the rear and the front, two separate videos, but I did them both within the last, uh, well, yesterday and today, last two days. But let's drive around the neighborhood and see how it does. It's still gonna be super bouncy because we still don't have shocks. This thing is huge. Okay, well we held up going down the driveway. Something ain't right. It's it's vibrating pretty bad. Something ain't right. I think I know what it is. I don't think the axle, the rear axle is centered still. Huh? Pull back in the driveway and fix that. Well, my memory card's full on my camera. And uh, now back home, I drove around the neighborhood. It shakes uh, a little over like 15 miles an hour, but that's because the rear axle is off center still. Uh, let me show you guys real quick. So if you look at the center right here, you guys can see that axle is centered up over there, but it's not centered up here. How I fix that, I have to jack it up, get my pipe stands, jack it up high enough where the rear can sit high enough for the rear axle to droop. Let this hang, straighten it out, and we'll be good to go there. I have the axle pins in themselves, but I don't know why I didn't straighten it out. But we did drive around the block. We got some pictures of it. And God, this thing is massive. It, it just looks so damn good. So, if you guys made it to the end of the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna get roasted, like I said, for how I lifted it. But like I said, it's my truck, I don't really care. And I know it's safe, I know I built it. I was just looking at truck rice and they had Gabe Farrell's truck on truck rice and they're roasting it and because his oil pan has some signs of leaking and because they sprayed the weld so they wouldn't rust. There's always going to be haters out there, guys. So if you ever want to do something, just do it. Don't worry about anybody else. If it makes you happy, just do it. And, you know, they can hate, but, hey, still got a super clean truck. And just remember, if you're doing it yourself, they're not paying for it, anything like that. Whatever makes you happy, guys, run with it, do it. I want to thank you guys for watching the video. If you liked it, drop a like on it, go down, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.